Oh, my goodness gracious. As, as they said, ding dong, the streak is dead. You are Locked On Huskers, your daily podcast on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ding dong, the streak is dead. As we said, it is spectacular to do one of these after a win and a big meaningful win for Nebraska football, the Huskers, this coaching staff, the fan base, and this roster. I'm Derek Pearson, DP. Uh, Lockdown Huskers, Lockdown Go Big Red, and we thank you for joining us for this episode, this special episode, um, a 27 to uh, 24 to 17 win over Iowa. Lots to talk about in this, and over the course of the next se- se- several segments, we'll talk about a couple of things that happened today that were special and unique, kind of a state of the, the, the union when we talk about what happened with this program today, specifically today. There will be other conversations to have about the coaching staff and about the roster. We'll do that in future episodes, but in this one, we're going to break this thing down, how it happened today, who were the stars, Uh, And then what it means next as we set the table for what's coming. I want to thank the folks from Lockdown Sports for allowing us to do this. Uh, For Bet Online, again, the point spread was 10 and a half. Well, the Huskers cover. And if you were so inclined to jump on Bet Online, uh, you could have uh, prospered a little. That's the last time you could do that for football this year when it comes to the Huskers. But it'll carry through to the Big Ten Conference. You'll be able to get all the props and odds and, and lines that you can want on, from our friends on Bet Online. You can't take a moment, subscribe, subscribe, and like and share and let other Husker fans know that this content is out there for them. It's for you. And we appreciate it. Just let me know down in the content. If you subscribe, just leave it in the comments. You know what? Hey, what? I just subscribed or I already do. Be greatly appreciated. Kind of let me know who you are. Uh, and I, I'd like to be comfortable with the faces and names that, that come across the comments as well. So we can do that. A um, couple of things that we'll talk about. Um, the, the tale of two halves and then the tale of the season. And what happened today uh, walking out of the locker room that uh, Luke Reimers wasn't going to play. So that meant that the Huskers were out there, two starting linebackers and two captains. They're also playing without Nori. You're playing without Teddy Prohaska. You're playing without other Huskers uh, that, that were part of this thing. And, you know, interim coach Mickey Joseph said before the game, our whole focus was to go one and zero. Our whole focus was to get them to finish this thing uh, the right way. And I've said on this podcast as many times as I can repeat it that the most difficult thing in all of sports to do is finish. It's the most difficult thing to learn. It's the most difficult thing to execute. It is the most thing a difficult thing to process. But it is the most important thing. And. A sign of a, of, a, of a team becoming a program is their ability to finish. It's the it's the big step across the bridge from being not for being close to actually being successful, being effective. And today, uh, watching this Husker team jump out uh, to a twenty four to, to to nothing lead and to to get. To, to get the feeling that they had come together. But the true story in this thing is Mickey Joseph getting these guys to rally, getting the backup, getting the backup players to step up and step into to meaningful, productive roles. I mean, you know, you're, you had Malcolm Clements at linebacker. You had Chris Kolarvik, who ended up getting uh, the, the game-clinching interception uh, filling in for, for, for Heinrich. They ran a cast. Javon Buda Wright jumped on, on, on the field and, and played, you know, crazy minutes and crazy plays. There was depth out there. Ernest Houseman, you know, being the rock solid linebacker that they had, had hoped for from an 18 year old who was out there putting in work. Uh, an incredible defensive performance by the Huskers, even as, as they finished. Look, they had 
you know, Petrus on, on the ropes, he was one of nine for six yards before his injury. So I'm not sure it would have made a whole lot of difference. But they played black shirt football. As a matter of fact, Bill Bush was caught on, on, on camera saying that was black shirt defense and that they will have those black shirts in their lockers on Monday morning. When they go do their exit interviews, they will get their black shirts. And bravo to them for doing so. But the story for me is in a season of chaos, change of coaching staff, change of, of, of group leaders and different coordinators in place and uh, players being injured and, and, and players having to step in, Mickey Joseph got the staff to unite under a simple rule that they were going to try to eliminate mistakes and give themselves a chance to be successful. The numbers, look, there. this was a record-breaking year for Nebraska football. No receiver has had the, 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 the receiving yards that Trey Palmer uh, finished the season with. Ever. And that, that includes, some, includes some great receivers like Irving Fryer and Kenny Bell. And no, none of them ever put up the numbers that, that Trey Palmer put up, even with two really bad weeks, over 1,000 yards. He also had more catches than any any, any receiver. There, there was a running back that had uh, more catches, but there's no receiver that's ever had more receptions in a year than what Trey Palmer put together. Uh, to, to understand that what Casey Thompson did, what he provides for this team, there are two winnable games that K Casey didn't play. And to, to underscore the importance of it, to see him throw the ball as he does when, when, when it's Casey and Trey together, this Nebraska offense is actually potent. The numbers don't lie. People, people will have their opinions, but the numbers don't lie. One of the great passing combinations in Nebraska history for a year, Casey Thompson and Trey Palmer. And the results were spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Um, we're going to pause here. I want to jump into the, the what happened on the defensive side of the ball. I want to talk a little bit more about the, the groups that have been beat down verbally and narratives have been created, the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, they stepped up today. A 24-17 to 17 win for Nebraska. We'll break here when we come back. Uh, we'll 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 talk about this black shirt defensive effort here on the Welcome back and again. I want to thank the folks from from Bet Online for what they allow us to do and help us do each and every single day. We want to thank you folks for making uh, Locked On Huskers the first stop. A first watch each and every single day when the folks from Bet Online, where the game begins, and they provide the best uh, odds and props and, and lines that you can find throughout the course of, of your entertainment, your sports entertainment. Um, I want to focus a little bit on some of the names defensively that stepped up, and again, based on what you know, Bill Bush said in, in post game was that this was a black shirt effort, and the players weren't players who were at the top of the list for players to watch at the beginning of the season. If you said defensively that Isaac Gifford was going to lead you in tackles against Iowa, uh, most Husker fans would have asked you what was for what was what what liquid was for lunch. If we then said that uh, you know. Uh, that Va Malga Clemens was uh, was also going to he was going to be he's be he would be your second leading tackle. Again, you would have nodded and smiled and said, "Man, you were you were having quite the day." If you we said that uh, an eighteen year old linebacker just out of high school would have six tackles in the biggest game in the biggest win in recent history, um, you would have asked, "What you know? How are you related to Ernest Houseman?" Caleb Tanner gave you a great performance in his 56th game, career game, as a Husker. He went out on top. He went out in, in style. It was spectacular. 
Garrett Nelson was exactly what the captain needed to be. And then you got exceptional play from Quentin Newsom. Uh, I was surprised at Newsom's energy level in the fourth quarter. I have to be honest, but he and Miles Farmer uh, were active and exceptional, and they didn't really get caught up in the nonsense. This defense—they blitzed from all corners. You got sacks from Malcolm Clemens, Caleb Tanner, and Quentin Newsom. Tackles for loss from Ty Robinson. That's, you know, look, that's not a name that we've talked about in, in that space. We really didn't expect, you know, Isaac Gifford to have tackles for loss. Michael Clemens with two. And then the Garrett uh, Garrett Nelson scoop uh, and return early in the first half uh, set the tone for, for Nebraska to put more points on the board. On the board. But Bill Bush recognized who Iowa was. They recognized how they like to attack. And look, let's be fair, their best player wasn't playing either. If Sam Laporta is, is, is in the lineup, then he's their go-to in a lot of situations. But his backup is not Sam Laporta. He's not that. He's just not as, as, as talented as, as, as Laporta is. But you play with who's available. Nebraska doesn't get to complain that, you know what, well, we didn't have our best players, so, you know, we should be forgiven. No, Iowa had the opportunity. They were playing for their share of the Big Ten West Championship. They were playing, they walked in for, for, for a sellout crowd. Uh, they were playing for their season. An invitation to the Big Ten Championship game in Indianapolis. They needed no other motivation at all other than the fact that you're playing for the thing that you – the first chip on your block is uh, to win your side of the Big Ten Conference. And they had set themselves up to do so, and they had been on a winning streak to do so. At home, against a rival, in a trophy game, this defense did a thing that they had not done at this level in the Big Ten against a winning Big Ten program, a program that was playing for something important and special. And I just, I, I, I just want to say this. There will be a lot of conversations tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday about Nebraska's football program. But tonight, what I'm telling the fan base and what I'm asking the fan base to do is put all that nonsense aside and keep the first thing first. And let's be clear. I want to say this. Don't let the narrative control your emotions today. Focus. What we wanted was for this team to go 1-0 in a meaningful game late in the season. This was their bowl game. This is why leaving on a win is important. It helps you in recruiting. It helps you uh, in, in energy. It helps you uh, be able to tag and identify what success looks like, what it feels like, and why you put in all the work. You have to finish your season with, with a positive, with some acknowledgement, with some seal of approval that says, all the work you put in, all the sacrifices that you that you that you go through, um, all of the pain, all of the injuries, the 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 bruises, the the bone injury, the cartilage injury, all of those things, the things that you have to stress about, all of the hours in film study, all of the hours of meetings, all of the time spent away from your family and away from your friends because you have a family that is the first thing. And that is the football program and your ability to get wins on Saturday in the Big Ten Conference. It is important to finish your season with success. And that's what the Huskers did today. And they will, they, I, I guarantee you this. Um, and I got several texts uh, immediately following the game. There's a video of the team celebrating with Coach M Mickey Joseph. And the Mickey chants are going. Mickey, 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 and they're holding the Heroes Trophy. 
That's what winning the last game of the season does for you. And then you add to that the fact that it was Iowa. It's your neighbor. It's, it gives you bragging rights. It lets you stick your chest out. It lets your chin go up and allows you to wear the colors for the rest of the season with your neighbor and look across the fence at them and go to their front yard and be at their front doorstep and be prideful because you had the results you, 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 you wanted. Nebraska did a very important thing today. They have reason to be proud of themselves, to be happy. All earned from the depth of the roster with names that you wouldn't normally know at positions that you weren't expecting them at. It's a night to celebrate. It's a night to feel good about being a Husker fan, being a Husker football player, being on the Husker staff. It checks the boxes. And so, Husker Nation, celebrate tonight. Ding dong, the evil witch is dead. And now you can be prideful again. 24-17, win over Iowa, sounds really dang good. I just have to share that with you. It feels really dang good. We'll go to break. We'll come back. We'll close out. I want to talk about interim head coach Mickey Joseph, and I'll talk about him when we come back. A lot. Hey, gang, final segment, and I thank you once again. I want to thank the folks. Uh, from Bet Online again, a ten and a half point spread. Hey, you know if you're in the kind of entertainment, it's where the game begins. And if you began yours on Bet Online, you are a happy Husker right now because all the props were pro Nebraska, and you had an opportunity to take advantage of it. That's not always the case, but if if you had jumped on Bet Online, uh, you had the opportunity. Now you can jump into some of the other games. There's a full schedule. Uh, tomorrow uh, that you can jump on if you want to do that. In the in 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 the next episodes, um, I will go into great detail about interim head coach Mickey Joseph. Uh, we'll talk about the players on the rosters, the seniors that are leaving, the players that may or may not come back. Those who are eligible to come back, and kind of the state of the program that is Nebraska football. And there are a lot of questions and a lot of answers to give. And we'll do that in the next episode. But to close out this one, I want to say this. I'm proud of head coach Mickey Joseph. I'm proud of him picking up the pieces, sewing up some of the carnage, rallying the troops, all of the catchphrases that are necessary in a very difficult situation. He was asked to take control and take command of a ship that he didn't build with a crew that he didn't choose. He was asked to save the ship, to keep it afloat until they got another captain. He was asked to keep the crew rowing even though uh, they were battered and bruised, and fatigued, and tired, and didn't know what was next. All they knew is that they were in the middle of a storm, and it would have been easy for them to quit. It would have been easy for them to give up. But what they decided to do under Coach Joseph's leadership was rally together, to band together, and to fight. To continually show up, to continually put in the work, to not get uh, depressed about the surrounding situation that they decided they were going to change the energy. They were going to do the best they could, and they were going to give this thing one final chance to be great on a day in the Big Ten Conference. He righted the ship. He kept it afloat. And now they have an opportunity to regroup, regather, recalibrate, redirect. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody's willing to come into the situation that Mickey Joseph came into. And not many could have held the ship afloat. But Mickey Joseph, 
I can speak for some of Husker Nation, and I'll say they're very proud of you, kind sir, for what you did in this space, in this time, for this football program. And we know how much you love it because it showed. And now it showed up in the locker room, in the in the crowd. It showed up. It'll show up on the bus, on the bus ride back uh, from Iowa City. Uh, it showed up on the faces of Husker fans. Um, listen. No matter what comes next, no matter what happens next, the three things that I like to say the most, thank you, Mickey Joseph, for what you did. I love how you did it and who you are. Mm -hmm. Well done, well done, well done. All from the heart, meant truly. I'll close it with the three words that We're screamed from the rooftop today and long overdue. Go Big Red.